to another video. Today we will be making Basquiat portraits about your parents, guardian, or any loved one in your family. You choose to do it off. So what this means is that you'll need watercolor paper, like this one, watercolors, um, any paintbrushes you have. Um, you'll also need pastels like these ones, or just any that you have at home. You can also use um, markers or crayons to replace them. And then you'll also need um, glue or scissors just to um, cut your watercolor paper to the size you want to. He was an Afro-Latino, so his mom was Puerto Rican and his dad was Haitian and um, he was uh, famously trilingual, so he spoke Spanish, English, and French. Okay, there are various things that we should pay attention when we think about Basquiat and his art style or like the way he would draw and paint. So the first thing is that his style was very abstract. Um, abstract means that while the subject or person may be real, the artist changes it so that their emotions are present. Okay, he also uses a lot of symbolism. Symbolism is probably something you've heard about in your English or literature classes, um, but it exists in uh, visual arts too. A symbol is something that takes the place of something else. So for example, you have a heart, that could mean I love you. Um, a very important symbol for Basquiat was a crown. Many people think that this um, symbolizes self-worth. Another key feature of his work is that he adds a, a little small collection of words that are meaningful to him as an artist. So for example, in the piece Pollo Frito, we see him using words like danger and asbestos. Um, obviously, this doesn't make a lot of sense to us, but for the artist, these were very meaningful words that he felt the need to add. Um, adding meaningful words that um, are important to you is something that you should take inspiration of for your own portraits about uh, your love. Um, finally, something you'll notice visually about Basquiat work is that he really liked to use dark and thick outlines as well as he liked to contrast very light and soft colors with very dark colors, uh, usually between his background and um, his foreground, so the things in the back and the things in the now we can get started on the portraits, um, since we understand our inspiration for this project. First, you need to decide who you want to paint, and this is totally up to you. Um, we are going to brainstorm, so it could be helpful to write some of these um, answers of the questions I'm about to ask you. Some of the things to think about are, um, what makes you love this person? Um, what's your favorite thing about them? What colors remind you of them? Uh, what is your favorite memory or thing that you do with them? These questions will help you create different symbols or help you decide what type of colors you want to use to represent your relative. Okay, as you guys can see, I started off by brainstorming. The person I chose to make was my little sister. So obviously I wrote down some of her favorite things that I know she likes to do or that remind me of her, as well as I put in some colors that I want to use for um, to represent her. And I don't have to stick to any of these ideas, but they're just good to get um, some of my ideas flowing. Now you're gonna take your watercolor paper and your preferred writing utensil, for me that was pastels, and start to scribble on your sheet. You have to leave enough blank space to fit a uh, face. And some things to keep in mind is um, if you're right-handed, try using your left hand. Um, another thing that you could experiment with is um, feel free to try to use oily pastels before so you can see what effect they have once you put uh, watery watercolors on top. So as you guys can see, um, I started by making all of my little scribbles and then I also added the symbols. So I know my sister likes Spongebob, she likes mangoes, she likes the TV show Clarence. So I just added all of those symbols, making sure to leave a blob that was big enough to fit a face. Okay, next with your watercolors, brush and water ready, you're going to pick a color that contrasts with the colors of your background and create a big blob that's big enough to fit your face. So um, in this example, uh, I use like pink and gray a lot. I do have a little bit of black, but those are still pretty light. So I try to use a dark blue and make a blob that was big enough to fit a face. Now using your preferred materials, you're going to draw your loved one's face pretty brashly again. Remember it is abstract. 
Um, it could be beneficial to have a reference picture of them, but um, it's totally up to you if you want to do that. Obviously for my sister, this doesn't look like my sister in real life, but it's pretty close to what I think she looks like. <laughs> Okay, more is more um, in this case. So don't be shy and keep adding and adding until you feel like it's ready. So as you can see, all of these different examples have different ways that they were finished. So um, it, you shouldn't really be comparing yourself to anyone. It's like up to you when it feels right for you. Like always, I hope you guys have a bunch of fun uh, doing this project and remember to show it off to the loved one that you made it because they'll feel special when they realize that you picked them and don't forget to watch our other videos.